Thanks for letting me stay here, I said as I walked through the door. I need a break from my roommate. He and his girlfriend over the last six weeks had gone into yet another argument. And there were only two possible outcomes. Something would be thrown across the room or hours of fucking. Neither which I wanted to deal with. You practically begged me, TJ replied. A sandy-haired man with green eyes about my age and height. He closed the door and led me into the living room. I don't usually have people over. Well, if I knew you lived like this, I would have asked sooner, I replied, comparing my tiny apartment in the college town to TJ's comfortable home. Judging by the clean brick exterior, spacious front yard, and hardwood floors, uh, he must have lived quite comfortably considering we had the same job. Eh, it's alright. I've lived here since I was a kid, TJ said. I'm going out on a date tonight, but help yourself to anything in the fridge. I have just about every streaming service, so watch whatever. Awesome, I seriously appreciate it, dude. Yeah, I only have one rule, TJ instructed. If you see someone in a raccoon suit outside, don't let him in. Wh what? I chuckled, thinking he was joking, but his serious expression puzzled me. You're messing with me, right? No, not at all. If you see someone in a raccoon suit, don't let him in the house. He replied sternly, grabbing his keys from the coffee table. It hasn't happened in a while, but occasionally he comes around and can be a pain. Okay, that's kind of weird. I know, but if you see a guy dressed in a raccoon suit, do not let him in. TJ reiterated as he headed to the front door. I'll be gone for a few hours and he's been coming around less and less, so you'll be fine. If I do see him, should I call the cops? No, it's not that serious, just call or text me. I can shoo him away pretty easily, TJ replied. I don't want to get the cops involved. Okay, I said, still feeling confused. He had to be joking with me as he gave me a gentle wave and walked out the door. Locking it behind him, I looked out the window to see him pull away. It was starting to get dark as I turned around and settled myself into a nice plush couch. It was nearly two hours since TJ had left. I was comfortably settled watching an HBO documentary about the crazy chimp lady. It was hard to believe someone could be so unhinged. Suddenly a bright white light filled the window. It looked like a spotlight. As I approached, I saw shadows of trees, bushes, and other objects on the manicured lawn. The light itself felt like one of those used on escaped prisoners in the movies. It was a bit overkill, but something else was out there, and I couldn't believe it. A man dressed in a raccoon suit. The light highlighted the stains, tears, and haggard look of his bodysuit. The head was worse. One ear dangled, the mouth part was covered in various colors. It looked as if the suit had never been washed, or for the matter of taking off. What the hell is this? I said as its head turned towards me. It waved childishly before walking towards the house. I backed away from the window, my mouth agape. Knock, knock, knock. I stood in the living room, peering down the hall to the foyer. I saw the ragged ear from the small window of the door. It knocked again, more forcefully. Hello? I know you're in there. A male voice said, trying to sound cartoonish and cute. I'm just a talking raccoon. Will you let me come in so we can have an amazing adventure together? What? I yelled in confusion as he began to scratch lightly on the door. I took a couple of steps in the hallway. Listen, you just need to go away. It's been so long since I had an adventure, buddy. He screeched as he continued to scratch. I promise we'll have lots of fun together, but you have to let me in. I'm not letting you in. Don't you want to have lots of fun? Hell no, I screamed. TJ said to not let you in. TJ, he said, overemphasizing the name as he began pawing at the window. Me and him go so far back. We used to go on adventures together. Oh boy, they were so much fun. Seriously, go away. Boo hoo, boo hoo. You're making me sad, he replied, sniffing dramatically. I'm just a talking raccoon who wants to go on adventures, and you're just a big meanie genie. I'm done here, I shouted. Go away, I'm not talking anymore. Fine, he yelled back before a heavy thud shook the door, as he had kicked it in anger. It became silent as the ears slowly retreated. I stood there silently, waiting to see if anything else would happen, but after a few moments it was eerily quiet. I returned to the living room, my phone on the coffee table. I considered calling 911, but decided to text TJ instead. Perhaps I'd scare him off. Hesitating, I set my phone down. 
Sitting nervously on my couch, I clenched my jaw, my stomach churned, and my legs jittered. I watched the chimp show, but something gnawed at me. I kept glancing at my phone, torn about calling TJ. Then I heard it scratching. I grabbed my phone and looked toward the foyer. The sound wasn't from there, it was coming from elsewhere in the house. My mind raced as I followed the sound down a hallway with three doors. The scratching grew more frantic. I passed the first door on the right, gently opening it to reveal a spotless bathroom. The sound didn't originate there. I turned to the left, opening the door slowly as the scratching intensified. The room was dark. I fumbled for the light switch, finding it eventually. The bedroom was immaculate. Sitting back out, I heard a voice. Hello, new friend! I walked over to the door, pushing it open to reveal a dark room with a silhouette in the window. I found the light switch and turned it on. He stood outside, looking at me. But that wasn't what shocked me. Inside the room, crude drawings littered the walls. Finger paints and crown scribbles showing two figures, one with yellow hair and the other a raccoon standing on two legs. Some showed them holding hands, smiling, or playing childish games. Others, more disturbing, showed a boy frowning and the raccoon crying. See, me and TJ, the two of us go way back, he chatted. We were the best of friends. Okay. Now me and you can be best, 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 best friends, he added, tapping gently on the window. Now can I please come in? Oh, pretty please? No, TJ said not to let you in. You don't know TJ like I do, he prodded. He used to be such a fun boy, but then he changed. Something happened to him. You're not coming into the house, now go away. He became a cruel, cruel boy, and my adventure buddy became so dark. He continued while waving his hand around the window. You see it here in his room, don't you? I don't care, I insisted as he put down his hand, suddenly becoming silent for a moment. Even with the raccoon head, I could feel a stare boring right through me, leaving my stomach in knots. He won't hurt you like he hurt me, he replied, his voice with a light tremble. But if you let me in, I won't let anyone, especially TJ, hurt my new best friend. My mind raced, the absurdity of it all impossible. This had to be some sick joke, and there was only one person who would do something like this. All right. Cut the crap, I smirked. I'll give it to you. This is probably a funny prank, TJ. I'm not TJ. I am a talking raccoon. Talking raccoons don't exist. You're just a weird prankster in a costume. He stood there, outside in the wind. For a moment, he lifted his fake paw and began rubbing his chin. I could hear him sigh as he conceded, still in his cartoonish voice. All right, you caught me. Good job. You passed the friendship test. I let out a sigh of relief. Alright, I'm glad we can end this game. Honestly, it was starting to freak me out. Yeah, sorry. Sometimes I get a little carried away. He chuckled, turning his head toward the front door. I'll see you inside, I guess. Can you take off that suit? I mean, it actually does sort of give me the creeps. What? He replied, turning his head back to me. Take off the head part, at least, I said as I stepped a little closer to the window. He started to breathe heavily, but stood there without saying a word. I began to feel a little uneasy again, starting to doubt myself. Come on, take it off and you can come inside. But I can't do that. All right, there's only one way to settle this then, I said, thinking of a solution to rest any doubt. I pulled out my phone and called TJ's number. The phone began to ring as we stood in the staring contest. What are you doing? I'm calling you, TJ. No, no, don't do that. My phone is in the treehouse. What? Hello? I heard TJ's voice over the phone. My eyes widened and I began to panic. Suddenly, the man in raccoon suit started scratching at the window menacingly, tearing the screen. You're not the fucking raccoon? I shouted loudly over the phone. What? Of course not. I'm not. Is he there? Seriously, TJ answered. Yes, he told me he was you. Just stay inside the house. I'm on my way back. TJ replied before hanging up. He noticed that I was no longer on the phone and bolted away from the window as I ran out of the room. I could hear a doorknob rattling from somewhere as I ran back to the foyer area to see him trying to open it. TJ's on his way. No, he cried, pounding on the door. I feared he might break in, didn't know what he was capable of. Let me in. He'll be home soon. The begging and banging stopped, but the silence was brief. I heard a crash and ran through the house, searching for him. The sounds grew more violent, and I thought he was trying to break in, but I found no sign of him inside the house. Then I heard glass shattering. The raccoon man had a rock and was smashing my car windows. Glass flew everywhere as he swung his fiery arm. He stopped and I felt relieved until I saw something worse. A small red gas can labeled with the word lawnmower. 
He was pouring gasoline inside. No, 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 I shouted as he lit the grill lighter. I started to dart for the front door, unlocked it and ran outside. Flames erupted from my car's shattered windows. I stopped as the fire grew, engulfing the interior. Then I heard a door slam. He was inside. Oh, crap. I muttered. I heard tires squealing and saw headlights approaching. I quickly ran out of the way as TJ burst out. Where is he? I think he went inside. TJ stormed towards this house and I followed meekly. He pushed the door open aggressively. Don't make me do it, he shouted. I lingered in the foyer, still fearful and not knowing what would transpire. TJ, where is he? I yelled as I heard someone running in the living room. I cautiously approached and saw TJ and the raccoon man facing each other. TJ held a broom. Raccoons live outside. Shoo! TJ taunted, swinging the broom wildly. A loud crack echoed as the broom hit the man. Get out of here now! No, I won! I finally won! The man shouted, blocking his face. I won! You can't shoo me anymore! I told you, raccoons live outside, TJ insisted, hitting me again. TJ, I'm calling the cops, I barked, pulling out my phone. When I saw him dive at TJ, tackling him to the ground, they rolled around, not here over the coffee table. The raccoon costume of his head came off. He looked like TJ, except his hair was long and tangled with a beard. His skin covered in dried mud, and God knows what else, and his eyes wide with frenzy. I won! It's been five years! He snarled. He stood up, holding the broken broom handle. Now it's your turn to be the raccoon and live outside! I watched as he shoved the raccoon head on the TJ. I wasn't sure if I should call the cops. I walked outside and looked at my burning car, wondering how I was going to get home tonight.